What's going on, my dudes? It is Wednesday. No, it's only Tuesday. This Monday, so yesterday, we had the first three bands in the Pioneer format. Now, I didn't rehearse this. I don't know what I want to say. Or I don't know what I'm going to say, but I know what I want to say. And uh, these are three interesting bands. Leyline of Abundance is not a card I would have looked at and been like, oh yeah, that card's broken. Oath of Nyssa, same thing. Felidar Guardian, however, that card, uh, that card can just hit the bricks. Um, so the thing is, I understand all three of these once you have the explanation that Wizards gave, right? And <clears throat> one of the reasons is that the, the Devotion decks, the Nykthos decks, uh, seem to be very, very strong with green being the strongest because you're just able to play big creatures. Like, you're already ramping naturally through green anyway, so then you play things like... If you go turn zero Oath of... Uh, turn zero Leyline of Abundance, turn one Oath of Nyssa, it lets you find Nykthos, it lets you find Ugin, it lets you find Ulamog, it lets you find pretty much anything you want to be doing with a Nykthos-like deck. All the Nykthos pieces are available to be found with an Oath of Nyssa. There was... Uh, we were actually playing the Felidar Guardian Sahili deck, and uh, someone commissioned this deck. They did a, they did a deck donation for it. And um, they had four Once Upon a Time in the deck. One of the first things I did was replace the Once Upon a Time with Oath of Nyssa. And the reason was because we kept casting Once Upon a Time. And then we'd have to put like Teferi on the bottom, Oko on the bottom, Nis uh, Sahili on the bottom, right? So, But when I played Oath of Nyssa, we saw two fewer cards. But we were guaranteed to hit something relevant every single time. Whether it's Felidar Guardian, whether it's Oko whether it was Sahili herself, um, you can hit all of these cards off of Oath of Nyssa, and then, like, your mana base becomes largely irrelevant if you have, uh, you know, like, Teferi, Oko, Sahili in your deck, and you need a red, a black, uh, red, a blue, a green, and a white in your deck to cast these Planeswalkers, it becomes largely irrelevant what mana you have or, like, you know, what, what colors you can produce. Because... Oath of Nyssa, in addition to being an amazingly versatile ponder or preordain, also just lets you cast these planeswalkers for any color. I was excited about doing fair things with Oath of Nyssa, like playing Oath of Nyssa and then playing something like a six drop Elspeth after a five drop Nicol Bolas. Just fair, super frenzy type things. Um, but apparently that's not that's not going to happen now because Oath of Nyssa is... Uh, you know, like I was saying, though, if you go Leyline of Abundance on turn zero into turn one Oath of Nyssa, find your Nykthos, turn two Nykthos, like, you're almost already netting mana at that point, right? Um, because you can tap your two lands and your Nykthos and then make three, so you're breaking even before you've even cast a real spell other than Oath of Nyssa. And Leyline of Abundance is just great for that. Plus, like, if you play something like Lana War Elf, it's making two mana... It's adding to your Nykthos. Like, the, the the Devotion deck, I can see the green Devotion decks just being pretty out of hand. And Oath of Nyssa, everyone is curious about why Oath of Nyssa was banned. I, I posted this on my Facebook page, and uh, I was like, you know, these are the bans. And everyone's like, why Oath of Nyssa? And I'm thinking, like, well, it's not super obvious, but let's look at a card like Ponder. Ponder says, look at the top three cards of your library. Put them back in any order and then draw one. Or shuffle and draw. Look at Preordain. Look at the top two cards. Put them on the bottom and then draw a card, right? So both of those cards allow you to select a card from the top three. Oath of Nyssa does the same thing pretty much. It's basically just a better Ponder and a better Preordain. And both Ponder and Preordain are banned in Modern. I mean, of course it doesn't have the instant and slash sorcery synergies, right? Like, you can't snapcast it back. You can't, uh, you know, trigger your Arclight Phoenix with it. Whatever, that's fine. That's what red and blue decks want to do with those cards. What green decks want to do with those cards is, A, fix your mana so you can cast Planeswalkers, which which it does. I mean, that's not what a green deck wants to do, but, like, it's another, it's a bonus feature of this card that you get in lieu of it being an instant or sorcery. And the other thing is it adds a green for your devotion. It's awesome. It's also, I mean, there's the uh, the Kethis deck, Kethis, Kethis, Anthony Kethis, Anthony Kethis, the 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 three mana Abzan legendary creature that lets you play cards from your graveyard, right? And with Oath of Nyssa in the format, you're able to basically just keep casting your Oath of Nyssas from the graveyard because it's legendary. There's a lot of things going on with Oath of Nyssa. Oath of Nyssa is actually a, a surprisingly versatile, powerful card with a very innocuous presentation right 
Felidar Guardian, I think, uh, is extremely reasonable. I, I think this card, anytime you have a two-card combo that can win as early as turn... Probably turn three, considering Gilded Goose is a card, like... I don't know, maybe not. Maybe it's it maybe I don't know if it's possible to win on turn three or not, but it's definitely turn four. And you it, it forces you to have the answer that early in the game. You have to have an answer for this card or you lose. It can't be a three damage. Well, it can be a three damage burn spell if you can if it can hit planeswalkers, right? But it can't be like just something that hits creatures because then you Sahili Sahili lives and Felidar Guardian lives. It's just a really specific combo, right? Like abrupt decay is great, but you have to have it in your hand or else you lose the game. Having to have a particular card in your hand by turn four or else you lose the game is just not fun, right? And if Splinter Twin can't exist in Modern, which I don't think it can, I am not a proponent of Splinter Twin being unbanned, uh, then I don't think Felder Guardian Sahili can exist in, in Pioneer. That's just my opinion. And the reason being, like I said, it's, it's just like if you're forcing someone to have a specific card by such an early turn in the game, it's just not going to be fun. It's not a fun play experience. I mean, even if Felidar Guardian decks were 10% of the metagame, which I guess that's still pretty high. Even if it's like 5% of the metagame, and it was, it was 4.5%. Um, it's still, that means 4.5% of your games are going to be determined by whether you have a specific card by turn four. And that's just not as fun, you know? you know given that they have the combo of course and so it's just i think it's it's better to hedge on the side of like hey let's not have this card be legal and we'll just let the format uh you know exist and breathe a little bit without without knowing the sahili felidar guardian combo is uh is in play leyland of abundance interesting very interesting i can see not wanting like nykthos leyland of abundance infinite ramp spells ugin and ulamog being uh extremely prominent in pioneer um they didn't ban oko which is interesting so oko might not have proven to be that much of a menace in pioneer i think we're all still kind of hoping that oko is still banned in standard i think we're all kind of hoping that i know i am because the card is just very good it's just very good but I mean, like like I said, if you guys saw my article on Cool Stuff Inc. last week, you'll notice that Oko was it, it won the vintage vintage challenge. It won the legacy challenge. It was in uh, the second place deck list for both the modern open and the modern classic, and it won the standard classic, and it won the pioneer like open challenge thing. So like five formats: modern, vintage, legacy, standard, pioneer. It was in six. Uh, of the of the deck lists right in the top two right so winning four of the events and and coming in second in two of them so like Ogo is definitely uh relevant in in sig a significant number of formats all of them and um i just i think the card is is extremely powerful whether that means it needs to be banned in a format like modern or pioneer i don't know i think it's definitely worth watching and i'm sure they're watching it whether it means it needs to be banned in standard probably I, we all know I, we all know we all know it's coming um I, I would be i would be quite surprised if it was not it was not uh, in the cards the next pioneer banning announcement is on november 11th which is next monday so like they like wizards has announced every monday for the first couple weeks or the first couple months or so they're going to be taking a look at the format and they're going to be watching the results of these events and they're going to be banning cards as needed um, and I think that's great. And some people are like, well, it's not going to be safe if you ban these cards. People are going to worry about investing. And you should. You should be invest worried about investing into Pioneer at this juncture because they literally said they're, they're looking at it. <laughs> they're watching the format closely and making bans as they see fit. So if you're investing in cards during this tumultuous banning period, um, don't. Don't do it. That's all it comes down to. Just don't do it. Um, I mean, Wizards made it very clear. If you know what Pioneer is, then you read the initial article from Wizards of the Coast about Pioneer, which also stated that they're going to be banning cards for the first couple of weeks as they watch the format unfold, right? So you have no real excuse. Just don't do it, right? And the thing is, most major sites, Cool Stuff Inc., the site that represents me, the site I write for, uh, I know, I think, I know Channel Fireball does, Star City Games might, they have buyback guarantees where if a card gets banned or reprinted within 30 days of you purchasing it, you get a refund. So, 
if you're buying from a, a reputable site, use promo code Frank five, for example, on cool stuff, then there's, there should be no problem, right? Then you should be able to get your money back, right? If you're buying through eBay or, you know, a, a Facebook group or something, cause you want to save a few bucks. I mean, that's just a risk you're going to take then. But for the love of God, do not complain about how it's hard to invest in the pioneer format in the first three weeks of it when they've literally stated that cards are going to be banned. Uh, as far as these bans go, I think they're good. I think they're good ones. I think they're safe. I don't think there's anyone who's going to be like, dang it, I was really looking forward to playing Leyline of Abundance uh, in Pioneer. However, it, it was showing up as a uh, quintessential piece of these ramp decks, apparently. And, um, you know, just just get rid of that. And, that, that you know, the thing is, the ramp decks still have a ton of tools. Like, it's not like cutting the legs out from under them. It's just literally putting them on a little more even ground. And this is good because it doesn't cut Nykthos out, right? Like, Wizards chose not to ban Nykthos itself, which means you can still play a white Devotion deck, a black Devotion deck, a green Devotion, a uh, blue Devotion deck, a green Devotion deck, yeah, or a red Devotion deck, right? And this is nice because we know Theros is coming. There's a new Theros set coming out. And being able to put the new Theros cards into Pioneer and still use Nykthos is a super cool... That's that's some, that's some good foresight. That's some good Aaron foresight right there. So I'm glad they did that. And uh, yeah, I think Oath of Vanessa, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an innocuous card, but it's a very strong card. And I, I think if you start to compare it to a card like Ponder or Preordain, which it basically is the same thing, you'll understand why it's so strong. It's basically a one... It's, it's, it's very similar to like Ancient Stirrings in that sense. But um, thank you guys for watching. I hope I hope you guys agree with these bans. I hope you guys don't think they were too uh, too harsh. I don't know. Let me know what you think. I would love to love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Slam those like and subscribe buttons. And um, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.